Ladies and gentlemen, hello again, and welcome to Phil and Will's Songs and Stories. I'm Phil, the storyteller. And I'm Will, the music teacher. And we've got another story for you today. Now, Will, I need your help. Yes. In the story, the story is set in a wood. A lovely, and it's a lovely wood. A wood with dripping trees. A wood with the four frost coming up to the knees of the trees. A wood with the promise of butterflies. A wood carpeted by wild flowers. And that's perfect. Perfect for the wood. Um, also, I'm going to need something else in the wood live. Three bears. Mm. Can you do me something? They're a happy family. I love it. That's good. They're the bears. There's someone else who comes into the wood. Okay. Rather an entitled young person who goes around touching other people's stuff without their permission. And she's got a face like she's sucking a lemon. <laughs> Great, okay. That's fine. great. That's the blues. That's good storytelling music, that, Phil. Ah, good, good, man. I think that'll be good for her. Okay, we'll get on with the tale. Right. Once upon a time, there was a cottage, a stone cottage. It had roses around the door, a white picket fence, and there was a finger of bluish smoke coming up from the chimney. It was a cosy place. It was a home. And it was a home to three bears. They were a happy family. Dad loved Mum. Mum loved Little Bear. And Little Bear loved them both. One day, my dear friends, the bears got up from their sleep and there was Daddy Bear. Yeah, yeah, there's Daddy Bear. Oh, look at those muscles. Where look at the muscles. <laughs> He's strong. He's big and strong. Right. Oh, look. There's Mummy Bear. Oh, well, look at the muscles. Look at the muscles. She's so strong. She's big and strong. But, Will, look. There's the wee dirty little baby bear who's so who's so good. She he is very good, and he doesn't know what's going on because nobody told him nothing. That's really what his life is at the moment. But he's loved by mum and dad. Now in the morning, all the bears got up and stretched and yawned, and then. They went to the bathroom to get washed. So they turned on the taps. One, two, three. And first of all, they washed their hands the doctor's way. Now look, what you have to do, first of all, wet your hands. Ah, ah, nice and wet. Ah. And then you get your soap. They're probably pump soap. Mm. Pump, pump, pump. You can wash your hands uh, the reception way, which is like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. And then you wash your hands the year two way, which is this, and this, and this, and this. And then you wash your hands the doctor's way. You get your hands like this. You go like this. And you go... Then... You've got to do a difficult bit, which is turn around. Are you ready? One, two, three, turn. Oh, look at that lovely movement, lovely action. And then down the wrist, and then down the arm, all the way, 
So you're all soapy now. The tap is still running. Put your arm under the running water. Now you've got to dry your hands quickly so they don't get chapped. Now these bears, then they had to wash their faces. And I'm going to show you how to do it. To wash your face the old man's way. This is what the bears did. But um, you're in isolation. What does that mean, Will? It means you've got to try to stop touching your face. So don't touch your face. Have you heard your parents saying that at home? Okay. But these are bears. And they can. So what they did, they get their hands into a bowl to wash their faces the old man's way. Which is the way I wash my face. So you put your bowl under the tap. You let it fill up. Fill the bowl with cold, cold water. And then you get the bowl and you go... <laughs> and you do it again. If you're an old man. You get your hands. Put them under the tap. One, two, three. I must be a young man then. I don't wash my face like that, Phil. You're, you're, well, you're a young man for the moment, Will. For the moment. Reach out, take your toothbrush. What colour is your toothbrush, Will? I've got a gold toothbrush. Oh, you are a young man. Then you get your toothpaste, put it on. And you do it. Do the back. Do the back. To side. Up above. Ah, one more time. Now you got a goggle. Now you're ready for the day. And the bears went downstairs. And it was porridge for breakfast. And Daddy Bear, he saw his bowl of porridge. Ooh, that's lovely. Me lovely porridge, me lovely porridge. Give me a big porridge. Oh, look at that big bowl. That's a big, big bowl of lovely porridge. Right, let me get my spoon. Get my spoon. Put it in. My porridge is too hot, said Daddy Bear. Then Mummy Bear got her porridge. Oh, here it is. It's a smaller bowl. She doesn't need as much as Dad. Ah, oh, isn't that a lovely bowl? I'll just get my spoon and I'll just put it in. And... <laughs> that porridge is too cold, said Mum. But the little baby bear is only small. He got his porridge bowl on. Dad said, we're going for a walk so that my porridge could cool down. What? <laughs> said the baby bear. All right, said the mummy bear. We'll go. And so they got their coats on and they started to walk through the wood. But my dear friends, there was somebody else in the wood that day. She was a little girl. Her name was Goldilocks. She had a face like she was sucking a lemon. She pointed out bad things in other people. And she went around touching other people's stuff. She was in the woods that day licking her disgusting lollipop. Oh, look! There's a cottage! 
I don't know whose it is. I haven't got permission from my mom, but I'm just going to go open the door and walk in. You should never go into a place unless your mom says it's okay for you to go into it. But she didn't care. She went over to the door. She opened it. She strolled in. This is a nice place. I like the pictures. She saw the porridge and she said, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat some porridge. She grabbed Daddy's bowl. I can have some of this porridge. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> That's too hot. Then she grabbed Mummy's bowl. Oh, brain freeze! That's too cold! But then she got the little baby's ball. She ate all the baby bear's porridge. She sat in Daddy's chair. Ugh, too hard for me. She sat in Mummy's chair. Ugh, too soft for me. She done sat in the baby bear's chair. Mm, this is so nice. I'm gonna rock on it. But I don't care if it's not mine. It should be... The chair broke. And she didn't care. And she said, I'm tired. I'm going to go upstairs now. On this bed. Oh, it's too hard. That was Daddy's bed. I'm gonna sleep on this bed. Oh, it's too soft. That's Mummy's bed. I'm gonna sleep in this bed. She crawled into the baby bear's bed and she fell asleep. Oh, my friends, what a carry on. But meanwhile, in the woods, with the birds singing. With the streams bubbling along, with the trees waking up from what dreams they must have had, three bears were walking back to their house, holding hands, telling stories to each other, throwing baby bear up in the air, catching him, and then throwing him across the river so mum could catch him there. And they walked to the house, and Daddy Bear said, Stop! I think there's someone in the house. And Mummy Bear said, Right, stay here. No, said Daddy Bear, I'll go in, and I'll go in alone. And he left. He went down the garden path. He went to the open door. He opened the open door, and he disappeared inside, and Mummy Bear said, Oh, no! He's probably in danger. This horrible music is playing. He's definitely in danger. I've got to save him. And she ran in to the door. And poor little wee Dooney Bear said, They've left me on my own. And he ran into the door. They looked at the devastation. The empty bowls of porridge spilt on the floor. Some of it. The broken chair. Little baby bear was in tears, and Dad said, Whoever it is, I think they're upstairs. He went to the stairs and went up. <laughs> Mummy bear said, Oh, listen, don't go without me. You might need my help. She went up the stairs. <laughs> And then the baby bear said, Mom, Dad, 
they've done it again. They've left me on my own again. He went up the stairs very quickly. <laughs> they went into the room. Daddy Bear said, someone's been sleeping in my bed. I'm outraged, outraged. Mummy Bear said, well, someone's been sleeping in my bed. I also am outraged. And the baby bear said, Mom, Dad, come here, come here. Guess what? There's someone sleeping in my bed. And they're still there. The bears gathered around Goldilocks sleeping. Little bear said, she's really horrible and frightening. She's got no fur on her face. Ugh. She's got a horrible nose. Uh, her ears stick out the side of her head. Uh, and she's got no tail. Uh. But then Goldilocks woke up. I'm hungry again. She looked at Little Bear. She looked at Mummy Bear. She looked at Daddy Bear. She jumped up, she dived out of the window, and she had it on her toes all the way through the woods. The little bear said, Gosh, Mom and Dad, that was a nasty creature with its yellow fur on top of its head. I don't like it. I hope it never comes back here again. Mummy said, you're right, little bear. Creatures like that shouldn't go around touching other people's stuff without permission. That's the end of the story. That's a very old story, isn't it, that one, Bill? Very <laughs> old story, Will. Um, and it's strange, when it was first told, it was called Little Silver Hair. Oh, really? Not Goldilocks. I didn't know that. So uh, that's inflation for you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time. Goodbye from Phil, the storyteller. And goodbye from Will, the music teacher. Bye. Bye-bye.